Is it my turn now? <laughs> <laughs> they say the best for last. <laughs> I am so honored to be here this afternoon and just most thankful for the invitation. Um, I guess I want to start out by saying you've heard all the statistics, you've heard all the information. I come to bring you a personal side of it, of what diabetes um, is to me and as a community health assistant or worker what my role is on the clinical team that I work with. I work with the Durham Diabetes Coalition, and I am so proud that a great majority of them are here today to support me. I am just so thankful for them being here and our project director and everybody, just thankful. Um, I wanna say that as a community health worker, part of my job is to identify healthcare needs that patients have and any barriers that keep them from getting the things that they need to maintain good health and to assist them in working towards overcoming those barriers and becoming more proactive when it comes to their own health. Um, I remember in one of our clinical team meetings, one of our CHAs uh, referred to us as the glue that holds the whole clinical team together and, and that's how I feel. Um, we work hard together and we want to see patients um, live a better life. Um, one of the things that we do is we give each of our patients a binder and in that binder there's valuable information that they can use to help them better understand the, the disease itself and why we are there to assist them. We introduce each team member to the patient in such a way that they won't feel overwhelmed by having so many people come to their home to visit them. And um, we help them achieve those positive goals that will help move them towards taking care of themselves. We work individually with our patients to connect them with health information and services, and we also help them to navigate the system. We have health integrators and communications specialists that help us put together materials that can be read by our patients and even those that cannot read well or have literacy issues or barriers, we're able to sit down with them and help them better understand uh, what all of this information is that's in the booklet. We connect uninsured patients with programs like LATCH, which is local access to coordinated health care when it is needed. We also connect them to programs if they need glasses or any other uh, assistive devices. But one of our main goals, um, if you were to ask me, what is one of your main goals? It would be to keep the patients connected to their providers, as we've heard it said before. We want to help those patients find the confidence to be able to sit down with their provider and ask those questions that they feel like they don't have time to ask them when they're in the office um, at a particular visit. And um, there is a, a special analogy that I like to use. When I was a pre-kindergarten teacher, I would say to my parents that children are like butterflies. And if you've ever had a butterfly light on you, whether you know it or not, his antennas are out and he touches you with those antennas. With those antennas, he can breathe, he can smell, and he communicates. And sometimes I feel like our patients are like butterflies. They, they're wondering if we really do care about them. And they have their feelers out. But thankfully, as uh, community health workers, it is our goal to make sure that we make our patients feel comfortable and help them to know that we are there and we do care about them and we want to help them see and get to those goals that they're trying to achieve. I had one patient to tell me that um, he said, I'm, I'm so thankful that the government allowed you all to come out and take care of me being a senior citizen. And that's the feeling of a lot of them that they're thankful for the community health workers that come out and take care of them. 
It reminds me of my parents and how they too were so involved in the community and they taught me the same things. Um, my dad was a diabetic, a chronic diabetic, and actually all of his siblings are diabetic, and so are mine. And um, my dad was a businessman. He owned three businesses in Durham. And over about 26 years ago, uh, and he was also a pastor. My dad was a pastor. My mother was a pastor as well. So they were very involved with people and community. So my dad um, decided that he wanted to go around in the community and take fruits and vegetables to the people in the different neighborhoods because our grocery store had closed in our neighborhood. And we were, as I find out later, we were bordering a food desert. So not only did he get his truck and go to the country and buy fruits and vegetables and bring them back to the community where I lived, which is in the heart of Durham, um, he would sell these fruits and vegetables at a very low price so that people could afford them because the grocery store was gone in the neighborhood. And later in his life, my dad gathered some of the people in the church and said, we're going to buy that property. And he did. We purchased that property. And for 25 years, that building sat vacant because what my dad wanted was to have a church there. And he wanted it to be a 24-hour place where people could come and get goods and services, whatever they needed. He wanted there to be trained professionals and people there to assist the people in the neighborhoods. And this was during the time where there were a lot of housing projects in Durham. A lot of them now have been demolished. And people are just everywhere. So we purchased the property, and it stayed vacant for 20, about 26 years. Before My dad passed away in 2002, and before he died, he, diabetes had robbed him of both legs, both hands and he had kidney failure, he had heart disease, he had so many issues that happened with him. And it touched me so much that, you know, I became so involved with uh, community efforts with the help of some of my close friends that were involved in community things. And so even now, I am on a board with the mayor's initiative to put a dent or reduce poverty in Durham. So it's, it's a subject that's near and dear to my heart, diabetes and, and all of the other chronic diseases that people suffer with. My mother um, took over after my dad died in 2002, and she put me in charge of that piece of property. And with the help of uh, partnerships in Durham, and I started looking at uh, RKG assessments and different tools that the city had put out about the needs in Durham. And when I saw that in our area, the need for a grocery store, because we were bordering a food desert, I decided to just stay right there and tap into that. Because I remember my daddy on his truck, going around in the neighborhoods, selling fruits and vegetables to people. So I was determined to get a grocery store in that corner. And thankfully, I had five other people that worked with me for seven years. We worked, we called, we talked to people. And finally, a grocery store chain said, yes, we'll come. And they did. And that was Moran Foods. And we now have a Sable Lot grocery store on the corner at 812 Liberty Street. So that the neighbors and the people that live in the neighborhood can still ride in their motorized chairs, can still push their children in, in strollers along the sidewalks because, yes, the DOT is getting ready to widen Austin Avenue and we'll have more sidewalks for people to get to the store to get the things that they need. Sure, there are other needs in the community and we are working diligently to make those things happen. But what I'm thankful for is that 
my mom and my dad, and my mother just passed away in July of last year. But my mother would have programs. She would, she would have uh, uh, cancer programs. She would have HIV and AIDS testings. She would have uh, diabetes classes. And she taught us how to continue to serve our community. That's why I am where I am right now at the Durham County Health Department. <clears throat> because my goal and my mission is to continue to serve and to do and to help people understand what that the disease is not a death sentence. It doesn't have to be. You can live with diabetes and you can improve your health. And so I'm thankful for being here today and I'm so thankful for all of the wonderful things, the wonderful programs that are going on and I'm especially thankful for being a community health worker. Thank you.